Hey all, and welcome back to Fuzzy Dancy Gaming and a new video on the channel going over my day two update for the Lightning Strike Champion. I'll go through the content I've completed along with how I feel the build is progressing and what sort of things I've been doing to make currency. So before we go over the build, I just want to state that I am aware I can get a lot more damage out of the build with things like Voice of the Storms and the Watcher's Eye, but these items aren't part of the crit build. So what I've tried to do is ensure that whatever I spend money on on my character is something that I can send over to crit. My worry is that because I'm away for the next four or five days, I buy Voice of the Storms, which when I was looking was five divines, and when I get back, it's two, and I'm not going to use it anymore. So I've now got my four Void Stones. Maven and Uber Elder are not easy on this character, as the DPS isn't amazing, and they're really annoying bosses for melee because they permanently move around the arena, so you might drop your two Vile Lightning Strikes, and straight away they teleport away, and then you've wasted your burst damage window. You've also got other mechanics and degens you've got to look out for, so it's really hard to maintain decent DPS on a melee build. If this was a dot build with, say, 2 to 3 million DPS, it would be an absolute cakewalk. Uber Elder should have been cleaner, to be honest. I tried to hold my ground right at the beginning of the fight with Shaper because I knew it was just about to phase, and I just didn't pay attention to the balls hitting me in the face, and I died. And that sort of put me out of my stride a little bit. We did get the fight done, and I think if you are good at bossing, you'll be absolutely fine. If you struggle on these fights, I would wait until you transition to crit. Maven, again... I did the fight absolutely terribly. I think my head's probably not clear from my cold. This fight I can normally do deathless with little DPS because I find the fight really easy, but I just kept positioning the degens in stupid places, which meant I couldn't easily read or complete the memory game. Those fights are out of the way now that I'll never have to do them again. I've got my full void stones and I've got my non-unique atlas complete, and I've got a few invitations under my belt. To get money... I've mainly been farming essences in yellow maps. They're really, really good money. Only cost you 3C to put two essences on the map device. You can take the node that gives bosses essences, which in early yellow maps are pretty easy to handle. And they were selling like hotcakes. I made an absolute ton of money from essences. I stupidly paired this with Delhi, and I didn't look on Reddit to see how bad Delirium is now. But Skitter and Delirium Wolves have basically been nerfed. They now drop something like one stack deck per tick of your rewards. Whereas before they'd drop chunks like three, five, seven. So Delirium Wolves are in the gutter. They're worth about 4C each. Simulacrums are worth nothing. Uh, and in general, it just makes your maps harder for very, very little return. If I'd put something like Expedition in there or even Harvest, I'd have got way more money. So I didn't really optimize my currency income, but I was enjoying myself. So I didn't really care. Yellow maps actually treat me really well. I saw the Nameless see it a few times, and I think the way you get the good mods is you have horrible mods on, you build them up, and then you get good mods offered to you. And each time I saw him, there was one item in his inventory worth 60C+. I had to price check them because there's some items that I weren't aware were ever expensive. So you do have to price check items with him. There should always be something that's decent money. I did get offered one Divine Orb reward from the lead mechanic where you go in and it will say... This monster has X chance to do this with the Divine Orb. And it was the strongest monster in the pack will turn jewellery into Divine Orbs. And I got three Divine Orbs out of the map, which is very nice. Um, other than that, everything's just really been self-armed. I found an absolute ton of essences. I then went to Destructive Play, even though my character was definitely undergeared for it. But I'd already had the tree set up, so I wanted to try it. It was fine. I leveled to 93 doing it, so it was fairly safe, but it took quite a long time. I've had a few Awakened Gems drop. I've obviously farmed some Maven Ritz. I farmed all of the frags from me to do Uber on myself, so I haven't had to spend any currency. So overall, it's definitely worth doing, but it was slow. It's certainly not one of the best things to earn money, but I enjoy doing that sort of content. Then I hit level 93, and I decided that softcore mode's getting enabled. I don't care how many times I die, as long as whatever content I'm doing, I can get done. So I've tried things like super juicy and harvest for all of the different map nodes to get pack size and things like that. That didn't go that well, and it wasn't worth it because life force is terrible. I've made an absolute mess of my Atlas tree, so I'm probably going to go and have to buy about 400 Maven Orbs to basically respect them all because neither of my trees are very good. But it also allowed me to not worry about dying when I'm doing like Shaper Invitations, Guardian Invitations, because my DPS isn't the best. So in these invitations, I am at risk of dying. So what I tend to do because I don't like life mods on these invitations is I tend to roll them deadly rather than tanky and hope that I can get through in six portals but at the moment I'm not trying to get big quant I'm just looking for mods that my build can handle okay so I'm not getting huge returns out of them but each invitation you get you know something like five maven splinters you might get a couple of guardian maps you get some frags you can get awakened gems it's definitely not the most profitable thing at the moment but I've been enjoying it 
So there's been quite a few changes to the build from the POB, which I sort of figured out as I went along. So we'll go through those now. So in terms of gear, I've still got my Ichimonjis and I've still got my Perseverance. Uh, the six sync is still the same. I've just I've changed the mods on it slightly. I still haven't got the currency to roll implicit because the blue currency is mega expensive at the moment. If I had aura effect and determination effect on this, it's probably about 8% more DPS, but I didn't want to spend, I think they're two to three chaos for a lesser I core. I just didn't want to spend it. The helmet, I have managed to roll mana cost of attacks because the red orbs are quite cheap. And I got lucky and rolled attack damage with my first few Eater orbs, but I was actually going for something like Fitz Taken As. Again, this is just life resistances. So the rings I have changed. These are now Chaos Resistance rings. So the way I crafted these, I bought a Fractured Lightning Damage ring here for 20C. I then bought some Turbulent Catalysts. I think they're about 20C for 20 as well. They're pretty expensive just to boost the Lightning Damage up. I then went over to Harvest because I mentioned I've been farming it a little bit. And just use Yellow Life Force. It's 100 Yellow Life Force to guarantee Chaos Resistance. I just rolled until I got a decent roll and something else and then I crafted Life. And then I crafted the other ring exactly the same. I already had this fractured int ring. So then I just rolled it with chaos. This one cost me a bit more because I wanted life as well. And then craft non chanting skills. Uh, the gloves, I think I've recrafted, but they basically ended up exactly the same. I tried to do something different with the gloves. It didn't work. So then I went back to deafening essences of zeal. Uh, I only had like two of them. So we're left with these gloves here. I've managed to roll my non vile implicit and I got lucky and hit lightning exposure with a greater I-Core. So that's 12% to lightning resistance. And then we'll go over a change in the tree to get even more from that. I can't remember if I had these boots in the last video, but the first thing I wanted to do because the lead mechanic is just horrible. There's chill everywhere. There's shock everywhere. There's ignites everywhere. So getting almond immune was my priority. So I basically kept rolling the implicits on this until I hit a chance to avoid Elliot Almonds. I've then crafted them with Essences of Loathing. Haven't got amazing life on it, but the rest of the mods are really good. And then I bought an Ancestral Vision for like 1.3 Divines yesterday. I don't know what they are now. So now I'm Almond Immune, which is which was the first thing I wanted. I spent ages on these boots because I think I went 60 Icors without hitting the mod I wanted. Once I got that mod, because the boots were already crafted, I could then put my Ancestral Vision in and be Almond Immune. The amulet I've changed as well. I bought a fractured intelligence amulet, rolled it with lightning damage essences and crafted life. That's it. Um, it's got all early res on it. It's not the best amulet in the world, but it does the trick. And then allocated arc and blows just because it's big damage. It's a silver oil, which is about 20 odd C and then two clear oils, which are nothing. You'll pick them up um, in any blight that you do. And then we've got quicksilver flask with pretty rubbish attack speed on it. Uh, evasion on the granite flask. Curse effect on the J flask and then armor on the quartz flask. Uh, in terms of the gem links, I've picked up an awakened added lightning because they're super cheap. And then our gems have hit 20, so we've started putting some quality onto them. I flipped any damage with attacks. Volatility, I qualityed up when I did my Uber Lab. Inspiration, I found a 18% level one inspiration. I put two gem cuts prisms on it and then started leveling it. Violent it's like I don't have a 2020 yet. It's something I'd like to do because it gives you an additional projectile, but they're going to be expensive. And then multi-strike, I'm just adding quality on this when I can. Uh, the quality is not amazing for this because it's just melee damage, but I don't want to flip the gem because I lose quite a bit of DPS. Got life tap, mark on hit, sniper's mark. Then we have our defiance banner. Then we got a life tap, corrupting fever, swift affliction. This could be second wind if you've got higher life pool. I don't need a big enough multiplier. Just for those aren't aware, Swift Affliction and Life Tap don't really do anything. It already uses life anyway. The reason we use them is because they're really high mana multipliers, so we can get Corrupting Fever high enough that it procs adrenaline. We've got our Determination, Wrath, and then we've got an Ancestral Protector. Then I've got my Smite linked to Increased Duration, then a Precision and Grace. Then over here we've got Blood Rage, which I am using it, but I do feel it's killed me a couple of times where... I've gone over D-Gen and Blood Rage obviously makes that even worse and I've not reacted in time. Got faster attacks linked to Leap Slam and then we've got a Dash. This should be Flame Dash and I will sort that out because Dash is just awful. And that is one of the main problems I had in Maven is I didn't have a Flame Dash so I couldn't go and dash through her D-Gen beam thing so I had to try and get the gaps and then I kept forgetting that Leap Slam catches them anyway. It was just a nightmare. Flame Dash should definitely go in here. I think that's all the gem links. So we'll nip into the tree. 
So I've added one more cluster jewel, which is just a two passive introspection. I've swapped my inertia out for a lethal pride. This was one divine and it's got one double damage on it. Bit of resistances, but not a lot else. And then we have the ancestral vision here. I have actually changed the tree. When I looked at my character, I have zero life regeneration. So it makes no sense not to take Vile Pact. So Vile Pact doubles how much leech you can do in an instant. So where you normally leech 10%, for example, with Vile Pact, you do 20. And because I don't have any life regen, there's no real downside. And the downside is you don't have any life regeneration. And I didn't anyway. It doesn't affect the regen you get from um, Corrupting Fever because that's like instant recovery. So I was pathed up here. So I've just come down here, taken all of the leech nodes and then instant leech as well. This feels much, much tankier. But when you have got Blood Rage going and you don't have an enemy to leech from, it does feel a little bit dicey. I'm not sure this is the best thing to do. Um, but when you're on one-on-one -on -one combat and you're attacking really, really quickly and you've got instant leech and big leech from Vile Pact, I definitely felt the difference. And then the only other major change is we've now taken this mastery so the exposure applies 18%. So you don't have to roll your exposure on gloves with anything other than lesser because this node is going to push it up to minus 18% anyway. Voice of the Storms would be a great option. It's about 30% more damage on this build. But like I mentioned, because it doesn't go my final build, I don't want to put it in there. So we're going to do a quick map showcase. Apologies, this is the fourth time I've tried to do one and things keep interrupting me. So we'll hope that this one goes okay. So the way I do destructive play, I want a map that's linear. Jungle Valley isn't the best map for it, but I'm very short on maps. And now I've got my void stones, I need to start picking up some good layouts. The more bosses you get at the end is dependent on the amount of mobs that you kill as you go through the map. So if you were to do last league and just do Mesa, rush to the boss and kill him, you're going to get one additional boss. With things like Strand, Dunes, you can kill more, so you're going to get two to three. And you've got more chance of getting boss maps. I think it's the best way to do it. I think if you're just going to boss rush, it's really not worth it just getting one extra boss each time. So we'll go and see what our options are. So the way I'm dealing with these is I find that the more difficult ones you put on, the better ones you get offered next time or the time after. Like I said, I've, I've had the Endless Seer a few times. I've had a Divine Orb, loads of Chaos Orb ones. So this, for example, I'll put straight to the top because I'm Ammon Immune. Uh, this is fine because I don't chill that. I don't know whether that's super deadly or not, but we'll move them around. Um, and then we'll leave it like that. So we actually, we can put this up there. And then we've got two big modifiers on the top two. And then I run um, them scoured mostly because I'm really only bothered about the maps at the end. And it does make them a lot harder not scouring them, especially if you want to put maybe some dodgy mods on from the league mechanic. It makes it a lot more difficult. It looks like this is an influence map that I picked up. <laughs> Uh, in one of my invitations, I didn't realise that, but it doesn't really do anything. Strong boxes I've got on my Atlas tree, but I'm only opening them when I'm doing this strategy if they're like uh, cartography or something rare, because most of the time there's nothing in them. Yeah, probably not the best map to clear, but... You don't have to clear it all. I think if you get half the map cleared, you're going to get a couple of bosses. I think if you get to... Um, I think it's either 50 or 100 from what I've toyed around with. Then you're going to get more bosses. But I don't think it's guaranteed that you get like the full extra. I haven't really tested it enough yet to know. So we'll just make sure we kill stuff. I'm not bothered about full clearing since this is um, a showcase. That'll do. <coughs> So this one's not too bad because I think you can kill this uh, boss, the Jungle Valley one in one phase. It doesn't have like an auto phase. Whether I've got enough DPS to do it or not is another matter, but... And we got nothing. Wonderful. Um, but that's kind of... What I've been doing, I have had loads of boss maps drop. I've been, been able to run a few invitations. Am I going to die from Blood Rage? No, it's going to run out just in time. Um, so we'll get out of this map. Don't forget to bind your portal scroll to a button, by the way. It's 
a godsend. It's like having a portal scroll, um, portal gem without needing to use a gem socket. And so that's kind of it for the video. I'm now away until Saturday. I will get back and then start the crit transition, which I'll document as well. I um, hope everyone's having a fun league start. It is rough, I won't deny, but I'm having a load of fun. I have had to level a bit slower than I thought I wanted to, but the build's done its job. It's been pretty cheap, uh, and I've had a ton of fun doing it. Thank you very much for watching. Take care, and see you in the next one.